Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, a lot of people have asked me, we have a new electoral map, what would a tie look like if Donald Trump and Joe Biden end up with 269 electoral votes? Is that even possible? Is that even feasible? And if it does happen, what happens? Because you can tie at 269 electoral votes, or you could have a candidate get a plurality of electoral votes if a third party candidate ends up getting electoral votes, but they still wouldn't win outright. Now, what happens is for the president, the winner is decided by the House. Not who has the House, but who has a majority of House delegations. They vote by state, and that would go to the Republicans right now, and likely also if the election's that close, it would likely stay with the Republicans. Now, on the other hand, who selects the VP? That would go directly to the Senate. Republicans are almost certainly going to retake the Senate because the map is so favorable to them that whoever the VP is that Trump would pick in a tie situation would become the VP. But if it is a tie, Donald Trump does likely win. But I did want to fill this map out because a tie is a lot harder with the new map because if you fill out the old map, and you gave Donald Trump the 2020 states, you gave him Georgia, which was decided by 0.6% or even lower than that, actually. Wisconsin and Arizona, which were both decided by like less than half a point too. Well, you would have 269 for Donald Trump and he would go out there and win the election in the House. And because Democrats did have the Senate, you would likely have had Kamala Harris as VP, although in a universe where Trump does take Georgia, Purdue likely does crack 50. Republicans likely may have done better in the runoff as well. Either way, they would have had enough for Trump to keep Pence as VP in that scenario. But that's beside the point. Let's fill this map out. What would it exactly look like? Well, we're going to give Republicans all of these states that Republicans usually end up winning, regardless of whoever the nominee is. The math just would not be there for Democrats to win any of these states, and this would give Republicans a very high floor. We'll throw in Florida. We'll throw in Ohio, Iowa. We'll give them Maine's second district there. We'll give them Texas, Alaska, and Montana. That puts them at 219. Then we'll go and give the Democrats the West Coast, much of the East Coast as well, including New Hampshire. We'll give them Maine at large. If it's going to be a close election, a state like Minnesota is not going to be in play. North Carolina would go in the Republican column. Illinois would go blue. New York would go blue. Hawaii, New Mexico, and Colorado would as well. So now the election map is narrowing. We'll throw Virginia in there as well as Nebraska's second district. So Republicans are at 235 electoral votes. Democrats are at 200 and 26. So in order for you to get enough electoral votes to give each side 269, you would need the Republicans to gain about, it seems like 34 electoral votes. And in terms of the math for them to do that, if you gave them Nebraska's second, it would be a lot easier. But because the district is not redistricted into being all that Republican favorable. It is a district that is moving to the left. It does not seem like that's going to be all that in play for this scenario. So it does seem like Donald Trump is going to win Georgia, but when you give him Georgia, there's really not a scenario that would put him in contention for 269 because yeah, if he gets Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, Nebraska second, he would get there. But it doesn't seem like Nebraska second's going to be going red if the Rust Belt's going blue. So either way, let's put these states as blue, Georgia as blue. There is one feasible pathway and it's a little bit of a long shot because I believe Trump's going to win Georgia. You could ask questions about Arizona. You could talk about even certain Rust Belt states, but because it seems like there's going to be a, a rebound in Georgia, you look at the polling, you look at black voters disillusioned with Joe Biden, turnout's likely going to dip. You're not going to have COVID level turnout like you had in 2020 that allowed Joe Biden to eke out a miraculous last second Georgia victory. 
I think Georgia's going red. But still, for this scenario, let's say something happens and Biden manages to have a miraculous recovery with black enthusiasm or whatever. And for some reason, Democrats edge out a victory in Wisconsin. Here would be the most realistic pathway. Donald Trump would have to win Michigan and he would have to win Pennsylvania. Do I believe that this map is all that likely? No, I do not, because I really can't see him losing Georgia, especially if he's winning Michigan, especially if he's winning Pennsylvania. But still, is there an outside chance this could happen? Well, maybe. Donald Trump is very strong with white working class voters, and he possibly could go out there and win Pennsylvania and Michigan. But still, like I said, if he's doing that, he likely takes Wisconsin with him as well. And if he's really doing that well in these places, I can't see him losing Georgia. I can't see him losing Nevada. I mean, maybe you could say he'd be spending less time in Nevada because it would be worth only six electoral votes. It's not likely going to be a part of the you know puzzle pieces that he needs to get to 270, even though he would like to have it. But still, either way, this is the most realistic scenario, 269-269 tie for Donald Trump and Joe Biden in the 2024 presidential election. Is it likely? No, but it could technically happen. So I just kind of wanted to make this video and show what a potential tie would look like. It's a lot less likely to happen than last time. I'm sure you would have a lot of chaos that would ensue in the aftermath of something like this. Definitely, they would have to be on watch for faithless electors and, and things like that. But for sure, this is the most realistic scenario, 269 to 269 for a tie, even being very unlikely. And I would give it probably less than a 2% chance, if not a 1% chance from actually happening. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.